You're standing on a boat, looking down into water so clear you can see the bottom. But there's nothing there. No fish swimming around, no plants growing, no life at all. Just millions of spiky sea creatures called sea urchins, eating everything in sight. This was the reality along Canada's coast, just a few years ago, an underwater desert, where nothing could survive. Now imagine someone telling you they want to fix this dead ocean by putting 500 furry sea otters into water that has no fish left to feed them. Each otter needs to eat one quarter of its body weight every single day just to stay alive. That's like a person eating 40 hamburgers daily. People said it was crazy. Fishermen were angry. Even scientists thought it would fail badly. But something amazing happened. In just 18 months, these dead underwater areas came back to life. Fish numbers went up by 300%. Ocean plants grew back faster than anyone thought possible. And those 500 otters, they were the reason for everything. Each one was eating 1500 sea urchins every month, slowly fixing a problem that took 50 years to create. This is the story of how Canada spent $15 million on what seemed like an impossible idea, and accidentally created one of the greatest ocean success stories ever told. It's a story that changed how we think about saving our oceans and gave hope to people around the world who thought it was too late. The ocean off Canada's west coast wasn't always empty. Back in the 1970s, it was like an underwater jungle. Huge seaweed forests stretched for hundreds of miles, creating underwater cities full of life. There were tiny creatures, medium-sized fish, and giant codfish living together. The seaweed covered 80% of the ocean floor, and there were over 2 million tons of fish swimming around. More than 400 different types of sea animals called this place home. But by 2018, everything had changed. The seaweed was almost gone, only 10% was left. The fish had mostly disappeared, 85% fewer than before. What happened? Sea urchins had taken over. These spiky creatures are like underwater locusts. They eat seaweed non-stop, and without their main enemy, the sea otter, they had multiplied like crazy. These weren't just a few extra sea urchins. There were 60 of them in every square meter of ocean floor in some place, that's 10 times more than normal. They were eating 30 tons of seaweed per area every year, creating what scientists called urchin wastelands. They ate seaweed faster than it could grow back, creating a cycle where nothing could recover. Sarah Chen, who studies ocean life, explained it simply. We were watching an entire underwater world die right in front of us. Without doing something big, this ocean desert would stay dead for many generations. Fishing boats that had worked for decades were shutting down, whole towns that depended on fishing were going broke, the ocean was dying, and nobody knew how to save it. But there was hope hidden in the disaster. Scientists knew about something called keystone species, animals that have a huge effect on their environment. If you remove one of these special animals, everything falls apart. But if you bring them back, everything can be fixed. Sea otters were the perfect keystone species for this ocean. These amazing animals have to eat constantly because they burn energy so fast in cold water. They need to eat 20-30% of their body weight every day. And guess what they love to eat most? Sea urchins. Exactly what was destroying the seaweed forests. The math was simple but powerful. One otter eats about 1,500 sea urchins per month, plus crabs and other shellfish. So 500 otters would eat roughly 750,000 urchins every month. That could reduce the urchin population by 70. The otters would move energy from the seafloor up into the water, creating a chain reaction of good changes throughout the whole ocean. Dr. James Estes had studied this otter urchin seaweed connection in Alaska for years. His research showed that places with healthy otter populations had seaweed forests 12 times bigger than places without otters. This gave scientists the proof they needed for Canada's biggest ocean rescue project ever. The Canadian government's decision wasn't made quick. Sea otters had been completely gone from Canadian waters since 1929. Fur hunters had killed almost all of them worldwide from 300,000 otters down to fewer than 2,000. Earlier attempts to bring back small numbers hadn't worked well. The big breakthrough came in 2023, when the government approved the largest sea mammal reintroduction in Canadian history. 
they would move 500 otters from healthy Alaska populations to carefully chosen spots along the British Columbia coast. The planning was huge. Each otter needed special transportation, medical care and tracking equipment. The total cost was over $15 million, making it one of the most expensive conservation projects in Canadian history. Choosing the right otters was important. Scientists picked healthy adults who were good divers from Alaska populations that were already doing well. Each otter got radio transmitters and satellite tags so researchers could track where they went and whether they survived. The first releases started in March 2023, with 50 otters going to Clayoquot Sound. Scientists were nervous. This would either be a huge success or a very expensive failure. At first, things looked bad. 15% of the otters died in the first month, mostly from stress and having trouble adapting to their new home. But the otters that survived started working their magic almost immediately. Within six weeks, researchers found 40% fewer urchins within two kilometers of where the otters were released. The otters weren't just surviving, they were doing great. Even better, they were having baby. By month three the first pups were born, showing the populations were settling in successfully. What happened next was like a miracle. Underwater cameras caught time-lapse videos that became famous in conservation cir- Ocean floors that had been empty for decades started growing seaweed within weeks of the otters arriving. These weren't just small plants, entire underwater forests were coming back at incredible speed. Giant kelp was growing 60 centimeters per day, creating underwater skyscrapers that reached toward the surface. By month six, the results were undeniable. Seaweed coverage had gone from 10% to 35% in areas where otters lived. Fish species that people hadn't seen in decades started coming back. Pacific cod which had been gone from these waters were found in schools of over 10,000 fish. Dr. Maria Santos, who led the monitoring team, described the transformation. We were watching an underwater world come back to life. Areas that had been underwater deserts for decades were becoming vibrant ecosystems full of life. The kelp forests were creating homes for hundreds of species. It was like watching a desert bloom, except underwater and bigger than we had ever imagined. The numbers were incredible. The otters were eating even more than scientists expected an average of 2.1 kilograms of prey daily instead of the predicted 1.25 kilograms. This meant 500 otters were removing about 1,150 kilograms of urchins and other prey from the ecosystem every single day. Over a year this added up to 380 tons of urchins, an amazing amount that was quickly rebalancing the entire food web. But not everyone was happy about these changes. The fishing industry, already struggling with decades of poor catches, saw the otter reintroduction as the final blow to their way of life. The otter's huge appetite for shellfish was immediately hurting commercial fishing. Dunganous crab catches dropped by 35% in areas with ot. A baloney, already rare and valuable, became almost impossible to catch where there were lots of otters. Captain Robert McKenzie, whose family had been fishing for three generations, spoke for many fishermen. They're asking us to give up our jobs for their experiment. My family has been fishing these waters for 70 years. Each otter eats what would be $200 worth of shellfish every day. That's $36,500 per otter per year. We're talking about $18 million in lost income every year. The anger reached a peak when the Fishermen's Alliance of British Columbia filed a lawsuit to stop the otter program. They pointed to California, where otters had helped destroy the abalone industry, once worth $18 million per year. The legal fight showed how complicated it was to balance conservation, economics, and indigenous rights. Several First Nations communities were divided. Some supported the otters as part of natural balance, others worried about the impact on their traditional shellfish gathering. But then something unexpected happened in month 18 that changed everything. Researchers discovered that the kelp forests weren't just returning to how they used to be, they were becoming more productive than they had been in recorded history. Fish populations in some areas were 40% higher than 1970s levels. Lisa Chang, a marine biologist studying this phenomenon, explained, We're seeing what ecologists call ecological overshoot. 
a temporary period where ecosystem productivity exceeds historical norms because previous limiting factors have been removed. The urchin populations had been holding back kelp growth for so long that when that pressure was removed, the kelp forests exploded with unprecedented vigor. Fish populations were responding accordingly. Commercial species that had been rare for decades, were returning in numbers that amazed even the most optimistic scientists. Halibut, Chinook salmon, and Pacific cod were being found in numbers not seen since. The economic potential was staggering. If these fish populations could be managed sustainably, they could support a fishing industry far more valuable than the shellfish fisheries that had been displaced. This discovery began to change how people felt about the program. The government commissioned an economic study that predicted the restored ecosystems could support fisheries worth $85 million per year, within a decade, nearly double what they were worth before the otters. The changes were having unexpected cultural impacts too. Indigenous communities that had traditional connections to these waters began reporting the return of species that had been missing from their stories for generations. Elder Mary Joseph of the Ahosat First Nation described the changes. The water is singing again. We can hear the songs of the whales, the splash of the salmon, the whisper of the kelp. This is how our ancestors described these waters. The otters have brought back the old songs. Tourism exploded. Kayak tours to see the kelp forests were booked months ahead. Underwater photography trips were documenting the transformation for National Geographic and BBC shows. The economic impact of this nature tourism was expected to exceed $30 million per year. By tw the environmental benefits were equally impressed. Kelp forests are among the best carbon absorbers on Earth, capable of storing 500 tons of CO2 per square kilometer every year. With kelp coverage expanding by 25 square kilometers in the first year alone, the otter reintroduction was effectively removing 12,500 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere annually, equal to taking 2,700 cars off the road. The program's success was attracting attention from around the world. Delegations from Japan, Australia and Norway visited to study the program, looking for ideas for their own ocean restoration efforts. The European Union commissioned a report on whether similar programs could work in the Mediterranean and North Sea. The otter reintroduction had become a global case study in ecosystem restoration. Japan began studying whether otters could be used to restore damaged kelp forests in the Sea of Japan. As the program entered its fourth year the transformation was complete. The underwater wasteland, that had shocked scientists in 2020 was now a thriving ecosystem that rivaled any marine protected area in the world. The 500 otters had grown to over 1200 individuals, spread across 400 kilometers of coastline. They were eating over 2000 tons of urchins per year, maintaining kelp forests that now covered over 100 and 150 square kilometers. The restored fisheries were generating 60 million dollars per year with projections suggesting they could reach $100 million by 2030. Nature tourism was contributing another $40 million per year. The carbon storage value of the kelp forests was estimated at $15 million per year in avoided climate cost. The success story came with important lessons. Talking with all stakeholders, long-term monitoring, and flexible management had all been crucial to the program's success. The initial resistance from fishing communities had been overcome through open communication, fair compensation, and the eventual recognition of mutual benefit. As we look toward the future, the Canadian otter reintroduction stands as proof of what becomes possible when we work with natural processes instead of against them. The 500 otters released in 2023 have triggered an ecological renaissance that will benefit generations of marine life and human communities alike. The story of these remarkable marine mammals reminds us that nature's ability to recover knows no bounds when given the chance. From the edge of ecological collapse to a thriving ecosystem in less than four years, the transformation of Canada's Pacific coast proves that even our biggest conservation dreams can become reality. In a time of climate change and mass extinction, when environmental news often fills us with despair, the otter miracle offers something precious, hope based on scientific evidence and real result. These 500 otters have taught us that ecosystems want to heal. 
that nature's resilience is more powerful than we dare to imagine, and that sometimes the most daring conservation efforts yield the most extraordinary result. The otters continue their work, one urchin at a time, one kelp forest at a time, one restored ecosystem at a time. Their legacy will be measured not just in the species they've saved, but in the hope they've given us all. Hope that our planet's future can be brighter than its past, and that sometimes, the smallest actions can trigger the most magnificent transformation.